E hiya everybody, Adam Cleary from 442 here, and I was going to do a big, elaborate, very clever introduction about Alexis McAllister for this video, but instead, I'm just going to take a direct quote from a really close personal hero of mine, Marge Simpson, and say, I just think he's neat, but so neat, in fact, that I think he might be the thing that wins Liverpool this Premier League title. Now, full disclosure, Liverpool came from behind to beat Brighton with this lineup at the weekend, and I very nearly did our main Monday video on this instead of that Arsenal City snooze fest, but the algorithm is a cruel mistress, so we're here today. But uh, first off, I really should say that as somebody else who also has a rich history of Scottish ancestry, but still manages to inject a little bit of, like, Latin or Southern American flair to everything he does... <laughs> I followed this journey that Alexis McAllister's been on this season with great interest. Because he was absolutely sensational against Brighton at the weekend. This is an assist so good I had to take a pregnancy test after seeing it. But it hasn't been like this all season. For large parts, he really struggled. And that was, if you so recall, down to the incredibly chaotic transfer window that Liverpool had in the summer. They had this enormous squad overhaul planned with so many different contracts expiring and players getting past their physical peak that they moved really early in the window and got Alexis McAllister pretty much the day it opened. They then splurged the real money on Dominic Sabozlai, safe in the knowledge that a bid from Saudi Arabia was coming from Jordan Henderson, freeing up one of the guaranteed starting positions in these attacking eight roles, which both Zabozlai and McAllister were perfect for. But then, oh no, the unexpected happened, and that same week, a £40 million offer for Fabinho, of all players, came through Liverpool's fax machine. Wait, no, hang on, it can't be... Nobody uses a fax machine anymore. Why do I still think it's that? It must be email. It has to be email by now for transfers. That, Which is a real shame, isn't it? Fax machine transfers like we used to have on Dream Team? They were cool. I'm getting way off topic. Anyway, this left Liverpool with a fairly major problem. Because yes, they do normally use a 4-3-3 and they've used it loads this season. But if you remember last year, they were experimenting with the double pivot to try and get themselves a little bit more control of games. And you had several players who could sit in these pivot roles. You had Jordan Henderson, obviously, but now he's gone to Saudi Arabia. You had Fabinho, obviously, but now he's gone to Saudi Arabia. You had Naby Keita, obviously, but he's gone on a free transfer. James Milner wasn't adverse to sitting there, but now he's gone on a free transfer. Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain wasn't a stranger to that position. He's now gone on a free transfer. You've got Thiago, but he's literally only got one leg and probably never going to play again. So there's virtually... No options here now. So with just like a month left in the transfer window, Liverpool found themselves with only Alexis McAllister signed to play as an eight who could reliably play as a six, even though that was nowhere near the best use of him. Now, obviously, they went out and they got Endo, but there wasn't much fanfare there. His reputation wasn't particularly high. And then they went out and got Gravenberch, who, again can sort of play there, but is way better elsewhere. And so, with neither of those two players considered a suitable option, in the opening weeks of the season, Liverpool fielded Alex McAllister in this sitting midfield role. And I hope he won't mind me saying this, right? But he, um, sucked. And the first major questions about this transfer started to get asked when Liverpool played Bournemouth. Now, they did go on and win that game, so it wasn't a disaster, but McAllister looked completely lost in that fixture and wound up getting himself sent off. Incredibly harshly, yes, you are right to point that out, but it was a bad performance anyway in the 60 minutes leading up to it, so naturally, it invited a lot of scrutiny. And if we look at his heat map from that afternoon, it just paints such an obvious picture of a player really struggling to impact the game in any sense because if you're sitting as the number six in a team with loads of possession this just should be a really glowing red bit here where you're constantly getting on the ball and you're dictating the tempo and you're bringing other people into play or if you're not in possession where you're winning the ball back and you're putting your tackles in and you're making your defensive contributions but as you can see by just how anemic the shades of yellow are here he's not really doing anything well now, if this sounds a little bit harsh to you, then it is, because I do think this is generally more of a system issue. If you look at the players who are around him in this game, he was always going to struggle. Liverpool have Diogo Jota up front, who was obviously going to drop away from the front line, inviting Mo Salah to get into that attacking space. But they've got Dominic Sabozlai in the right-hand side eight, so he 
can add the width and cover over when Salah moves in field. So straight away in a midfield three, you're largely taking away any help he's going to get on the right hand side and Cody Gakpo is on the left who just kind of does whatever Cody Gakpo wants to do. So he's not really going to be much help on that side either. Now part of the plan with using this system was to allow Trent Alexander-Arnold to invert from right back and get involved there, which he did do sporadically in this game, but they only do that in possession. When Liverpool lose the ball, Alexander-Arnold's job is to get back into the right back area, leaving again McAllister completely isolated. And I can remember watching this game at the time and noticing like how much he was struggling in that role like he gave the ball away like 11 times i think he only had like 80 percent pass accuracy which for him is incredibly low like he was getting bullied off the ball there wasn't players near him when he needed support there was nobody in the right positions when he could get his head up on the ball and it just looked like such a bad fit now the thing is the problems here were pretty obvious even back then like alexis mcallister is brilliant off the ball, but not in a way that shields the back four. He's really good at counter-pressing in the final third. And likewise, when he's on the ball, he's got a really short, sharp, incisive pass between the lines or in between defenders, which again is better utilised in the final third and can just be a bit nothingy in the middle of the park. Therefore, and this is not the first time I've said this in a video, the emergence of Wataro Endo into this Liverpool team has been a revelation. His getting to grips with the league and the system and everything that's required of him and becoming a guaranteed pick for Klopp when he's fit in this role means that Alexis McAllister can now play as his right-sided eight and he's thriving as a result, right? But for as much as it's about the inclusion of somebody, it's the absence of somebody else which is also making this work. If Endo being amazing is the best thing that's ever happened to Alexis McAllister, Trent Alexander-Arnold being injured might be the second best thing. And that is because having to use Connor Bradley in this right-back role, a player who wants to get all the way up and down that flank, is so much better for a player like McAllister than having Alexander-Arnold tuck in behind him and want to get on the ball himself. When you are defending against a 4-3-3 and one that has a lot of possession, what you expect to happen is the main three attacking threats be the forwards, but then the eight, these two here, will join in at some point. Now, whether that's someone gets up with the centre forward and just plays plays as number nine, whether somebody floats around, plays as a 10, maybe there's an interchange where somebody comes inside and they go wide. You expect these two players to be getting into the box in some way. But with Liverpool in recent weeks, and in particular in the Brighton game, when Mo Salah makes that run into the box to get alongside the centre forward, it's actually Connor Bradley who gets all the way up that side to provide the width. And it's this triangle here between Bradley, McAllister and Salah that is just so, so good for Liverpool. Like their ability to play off each other, their ability to rotate, interchange positions is, I don't even know the words, like f***ing scary. There's a great little one here where it's actually Connor Bradley who's gone inside and Salah's stayed out wide. Bradley turns to face McAllister when he gets on the ball, comes towards him, draws the defender out of this space. Salah gets in behind and McAllister floats a brilliant pass into him. This time Bradley's out wide, Salah's central, McAllister's got the ball again and they do this brilliant bit of timing where Salah just trots towards McAllister, pulls the defender out of position and they get over the top again. This time Salah's actually swapped with Nunes but they do the exact same thing of dragging the defender out of position. Bradley makes the run in behind, McAllister times it perfectly and slips him in. Like it's actually nuts how effective this is for them. Like this is every chance that McAllister directly made in this game. So we're not even including all the ones he made with somebody else then went and did the bit, right? They're, just, they're all, they're all in the right hand half space when he gets on the ball and he can feed it into the box. They got five chances off that exact thing alone. And the goal might not have any nice little triangles I can draw on it, but it does just illustrate like what level of quality he has in these really tight spaces in the final third, both in terms of his technique and his brain up here. Like Dominic Zaboslai murders this ball into his feet. You could give me a hundred goals at controlling that. I think it would break my leg in most of them, but instead it sticks to McAllister's foot like chewing gum in hair. He's already done amazingly well to find himself in this much space on the edge of the box. And when he gets that ball, the Brighton defenders have to hit the panic button and rush out to him, thus leaving Mo Salah completely free. And to not only see this pass, but to weight it that perfectly, there are just not many players in the league capable of doing both those things. And just to go back to that heat map from the Bournemouth game where he was clearly really struggling to find himself and to impose himself on the game, this is his heat map 
from the Brighton match. Like straight away, you can see exactly who this player is, where he wants to get on the ball, where he's most effective, how he can hurt the opposition. He's comfortable dropping into these deep areas and making a contribution there. Sure, but if you can get him on the ball in this half space around the box, he is lethal. And he's now really, really found himself in this team. And the numbers are starting to reflect that as well. Like if we look at his shot creating actions from his opening four games for Liverpool, so just anything he does on the pitch, which leads to a teammate getting a shot. I think he had something like five total in those first four games. But compare that to his last four games for Liverpool, he's had 31 in just four matches. He had 11 alone against Brighton. Now, you might be looking at that thinking, well, yeah, obviously he was playing as a six and now he's playing as an eight. So he had far more defensive responsibility here, which he now doesn't have. So he's just focusing on creating. So obviously those numbers are going to go up. And good point... But shall we look at his defensive contribution as well? In those first four games for Liverpool, he successfully made a combined 16 tackles and interceptions. And in his last four games for Liverpool, he has made a combined 16 tackles and interceptions. Like his defensive contribution, his responsibility in this team has remained the same. It's just that now he's able to add what he's really good at at the same time. And speaking of that defensive contribution, right, I want to show you how mad his stats are for that this season compared to last season with Brighton. So this is Alexis McAllister last season. It's not really his job, although Brighton do obviously enjoy a high press every, every now and then. He obviously wasn't responsible for getting the ball back too much. Not his game, you would assume. But now this is him this season. Like it's a combination of playing as a number six in the early exchanges, but also Liverpool's desire to win the ball back in the final third. He's sort of emerging as one of the best high-pressing, ball-winning midfielders in the entire league. Now bear in mind, this is a player who does all his best work just outside the box and is currently registering like an assist every 60 minutes or something in the last couple of games. No other player has blocked more passes, has read the game better when the other team have the ball than him. Like, he's right at the top of the charts for the ball one in the middle third of the pitch, which is just so important. People can't really dribble around him at all. He blocks things really well. His just total tackles and interceptions is really high. Like, you take his ability on the ball to make stuff happen, like that Salah assist, and you put it in the shell of a man who can win it back so fiercely, and yikes. And just to finish off here, this is every single defensive contribution McAllister made in that game, right? And there's only Lewis Dunk and Connor Bradley, or defenders, as you might call them, who had more in that match. I honestly think, right, he has become this season, through a combination of, like, positional necessity, but also good coaching, probably the most well-rounded midfielder in the Premier League. Like, there is nothing he isn't in some way good at. So yes, there you go. This is like the third Liverpool video I've done where the title is not why Endo is amazing, but the subtext is certainly inferred to be why Endo is amazing. So we will do one on him eventually, I promise, but today was just Alexis McAllister. I thought he deserved his flowers, but please do subscribe to us here on 442 so you don't miss the inevitable Endo video when we do that. You can also get me across all the social medias. I'm on a lot of them, at Adam Cleary, C-L-E-R-Y, latest issue with a mag. Look, it's Trent Alexander-Arnold. You probably like him. That's in stores for a few more days at most now. The new one drops this week, so make sure you catch that before it's gone. And um, yeah, newsletter there we have a newsletter that's really good that's in the description as well i keep meaning to make a checklist for this and forgetting but i think that's everything i'm adam cleary i did say that yeah so you got everything that's all that's all you need on your way bye